This video introduces and revisits various topics related to data manipulation. I'm going to start with computer architecture, which we talked previously, that's the hardware overview, followed by a primer on machine language, which is then followed by a program execution overview. I'm then going to reintroduce you to the CPU's arithmetic logic unit, which I've also described earlier in the series, followed by the computer's communication with devices, then ending with programming data manipulation. Examples of each will be given and explained along with some hands-on opportunities for you as well. Before we get into that, do you know what the circuitry in a computer that controls the manipulation of data is called? We'll explore this topic in this video. My name is Tim Pachaka from the Learn Programming Academy. And this is my Learn to Code series right here on YouTube. Well, the circuitry in a computer that controls the manipulation of data is called the Central Processing Unit, or CPU and we'll explore this topic in this video. The computer's central processing unit, CPU or microprocessor as most of us refer to it as, controls all the manipulation of data. Some common CPUs used by consumers in computers, laptops, tablets and smart devices are manufactured by Intel and AMD. There's also newer CPUs based on ARM architecture and even Apple have recently introduced Apple Silicon and the list goes on. Now just as the term describes, Microprocessors are quite small, usually a couple of inches in length and width or even smaller, like a postage stamp in smart devices. These CPUs plug into a socket on the device's main circuit board, fondly called a motherboard. The CPU consists of three parts. The arithmetic logic unit, which contains the circuitry that performs operations like addition and subtraction on data. The control unit, which contains the circuitry for coordinating all the computer's activities and the register unit, which contains temporary memory for data being manipulated by the arithmetic logic unit. The CPU really is an amazing and fascinating device. Some of the registers within the register unit are considered general purpose registers, and others are special purpose registers. General purpose registers serve as temporary holding containers for data being manipulated by the CPU. Inputs to the arithmetic logic unit, as well as the results, are held in these registers. For example, to do an addition of two numbers and produce the result, the CPU's control unit transfers the two numbers from main memory or RAM into general purpose registers. Then it, the control unit, informs the arithmetic logic unit, which registers hold the data to add, activates the appropriate circuitry within the arithmetic logic unit to do the addition, and receives the result of the addition back from the arithmetic logic unit and stores it in another register. Now getting the two numbers to be added from main memory is also a function of the control unit. Moving, reading or getting data from main memory and then moving, writing or putting data back into the main memory is all done through a collection of electronic wires called a bus. The control unit is certainly an amazing component of the CPU as it coordinates everything that takes place within the CPU. It's difficult to talk about the CPU without including a more detailed discussion about memory. A typical CPU cycle includes interaction with memory, sometimes referred to as main memory. So what is memory or main memory? Well, think about the eight gigabytes of memory, for example, often found in some desktops, laptops, or tablets, as I talk about this. This type of memory is said to be volatile, meaning that when the power is turned off, the memory loses all the data and software programs and apps that were temporarily stored in it. Now this is different than the gigabytes of memory found in your smartphone or wearable, which is used for storage. The storage type of memory is non-volatile, meaning that when the power is turned off, the data and software programs and apps remain held in that type of memory. Now a few examples of the non-volatile memory used for retaining data, software programs and apps over time are called hard disk drives, memory sticks, and solid state devices, SSDs. These devices are designed to hold large amounts of gigabytes or even terabytes of data, software programs, and apps. Now while we're on the topic of memory, there's one more concept found in most of today's microprocessors or CPUs, and that's cache memory. Before I explain this, let me summarize the concepts of registers, main memory, and storage. Registers are used to hold data immediately applicable to the control unit's operation being done. Main memory is used to hold data that will be needed soon or was just recently stored from an operation that took place. And storage holds data on a more permanent and possibly not needed right now basis. Cache memory is very high speed memory located within the CPU itself. The CPU attempts 
to keep a copy of some of the data that it anticipates might be soon needed from registers, and so it's moved there ahead of time. Changes made to cache memory are then moved back to the registers very quickly and at a more convenient time so that the CPU's cycle time is not interrupted, moved from the registers back to main memory. Doing so improves the CPU's overall speed and efficiency. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, how the CPU works is simple to discuss, but in reality, quite sophisticated. I will simplify how it works in my discussion here. Follow along with the figure if you think this will help. So let's say you've got an app that needs to get us to input two numbers, add those numbers together and output the result. Seems pretty simple. Add three plus two resulting in five. The instructions from the app must already be inside the CPU and we'll not be discussing the movement of programming instructions from the actual software program or app into and out of the CPU. The user of the app inputs the two numbers, three and two, which are stored in the main memory of the computer. Referring to the above table, the sequence for performing this addition operation starts with the CPU's control unit transferring a copy of the data from memory via a bus, which is a collection of wires that join the CPU to the main memory and temporarily stores them into two registers, memory inside the CPU. The control unit then activates the circuitry for the arithmetic logic unit to do the addition, which it does, placing the result of five into another register. Then the control unit places a copy of the result back into main memory via the bus. The CPU's control unit is perhaps the most sophisticated part of the CPU as it must do all these steps in perfect sequence and timing. Now you may have heard of CPU clock speeds, I suspect. Well, the clock speed is what determines the timing in which the control unit does each of its actions. The CPU is simply an amazing technology and it continues to evolve to become even better and faster to keep up with all of us consumers demanding the computer do so much more for us than it used to do just a few years ago. Now before going on to the next video, I do suggest that you pause the video and summarize the concepts covered, CPU, arithmetic logic unit, control unit, registers, cache memory, main memory, etc., in your own words to better remember each of them and have some fun with this. Alrighty, so I hope you did have some fun and felt successful trying to explain the concepts in your own words. The next video in this section dives into machine language without you being required to swim or be a computer programmer. I think you'll find it very interesting. Thanks as always for watching. See you in the next video. Alrighty, this is the part of the video where I meant to get all enthusiastic and to ask you, or quite literally beg you, to subscribe to my channel and to like the video, leave a comment and all that stuff. Well, I'm going to leave that decision in your capable hands to decide whether I've earned a like or a subscribe or a comment. I'd be grateful if you do one, both or all three. My videos will get out there and in front of a bigger audience if I get that level of engagement, but obviously it's your choice. All right, so remember that this series was meant to be watched in order. So if you haven't watched from the start, then how dare you watch my video series out of order? <laughs> Click the link over here to get to the first video in the series and watch that if you want to see the entire series in order. Or come over here and click to view the previous video in the series. Again, your choice. All right, I'm done. Catch you in the next video.